Say I'm here in Philadelphia in front of the uh, art museum, and in the backdrop we have the Liberty Bell and all that stuff. And, and that, some folks getting married. And, uh, <laughs> and some people getting married right uh, uh, here in the rocky uh, steps coming up to the museum. But I'm joined here today by we in the faculty, Dr. Alex. So yeah, Alex, thank you so much for joining me. Hey, thanks for having me. So Alex, we have an online question that I figured we would answer. And the question that has come up, Alex, is uh, what is the success rate of retreatments? And why is the success rate lower than conventional root canal therapy? Oh, well, it's a fair question because the, the success rate of endodontic treatment in general is related to how uh, how efficient you are in getting rid of the main canal contents, getting rid of the tissue, the infection, or whatever makes it go bad. Mm -hmm. So the success the rate... The biofilm. The biofilm. Uh, microbes, uh, exactly. all the stuff. Yeah. So the success rate doesn't have necessarily to be lower. It's just that in a retreatment case, it's a bit more challenging to get rid of the main canal contents, to get rid of the main... Uh, a biofilm sitting in, in the root canal, sometimes even the material is more challenging to remove. So it compares to, to a non-vital tooth in general if you're able to be efficient in your cleaning and shaping. So Alex, you think that the success rate of the retreatments should compare more or less the same as a non-vital necrotic tooth? Which would be by the studies, I think, in the 92. high 80s, uh, kind of a, about 90% success rate, right? It's true. It, it, again, it's all related to each specific case or, right. or how, how much of that tissue can't get rid of that, what's causing the problem. It's the, it's the, the tissue left behind. Right. So in a retreatment, uh, I would go even as high as 90, 92% if you're able to address the problem. Right say, tissue left behind, a missed canal, or, or, or anything else that's causing the problem. And I think that's a significant part of the issue. I mean, part of the reason why the success rate of a retreatment is lower is, statistically speaking, is because the case didn't work to begin with. So sure. it's obviously probably either yeah. a tougher case, it yeah. has or some, some issues, crack, yeah. or there has been some procedural errors yeah. that actually compound the problem. Because True. not only now you're dealing with correcting nature and getting rid of the bacteria yeah. but you also have yeah, to you know you have to deal with your colleagues uh, you know artwork as well yeah so uh, that's part of the reason as well also do you think in terms of the biofilm quality there is a difference between the biofilm that you find in a regular necrotic tooth and a biofilm that you find in a tooth that is failing and requires retreatment yeah you you will find uh, in the literature saying that you have different biofilms and and some of the nastiest bugs uh, in the root canal system you will find in a retreatment case. For example, like Enterococcus faecalis, it's not even an oral bacteria. Yeah. It manages to survive Somehow. inside. Somehow. <laughs> yeah. It's an enteric bug, yeah. but it, it, it can mess up your, your success big time. But again, if you're effectively able to remove it, you mm -hmm. remove that biofilm uh, in spite of the quality, then yes, then, then you'll be as successful as any other case. So Alex, then probably it would be since you have different biofilms, you have a higher uh, rate of failure because the original biofilm was more difficult to get rid of. Do you find any better ways then to get rid of the new biofilm in these types of cases? I think it's a fair question, but I treat every case, regardless of the quality of infection, uh, as if it was heavily infected with the worst possible biofilm. Yeah. And, and I, I really uh, use it very seriously, my sodium hypochloride, and I use ultrasonic vibration and some new means that we have now to get rid of that, that material. Uh, so I treat every case, if you're asking me personally, I treat every case In if it was way. the worst case scenario. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. That's the way I anesthetize people. <laughs> I anesthetize <laughs> yeah. everyone as though yeah. they're not going to get anesthetized. Yeah. So everybody gets a little bit of extra. Yeah. And I think that's a good way of getting a predictable outcome. So by always preparing yourself for the worst case scenario, mm -hmm. you end up covering all the easy ones and the hard ones as opposed yeah. to just plan for the easy ones. But I think you know uh, the main things for... Uh, Retreatments that would be even more significant would be making sure that you have a large enough apical diameter so you can remove the biofilm. The key here is to touch all the walls. There's some newer instruments that are now uh, available that allow you some, um, you know, phase transformation of the file. 
yes. with at body temperature that allows you to actually whip against the, uh, the, the canal walls and be able to get rid of the biofilm that way. Uh, and I think that's very effective. Yeah. A lot of uh, ultrasonics and uh, so on are all important uh, ways of getting rid of any potential areas of the canal that wasn't touched originally during the regular yeah. instrumentation. So I think that's pretty much it. The success rate yeah. is high if all the basic principles are followed. Agreed. And uh, I think that you know we should expect and retreatment is a very good uh, idea as opposed to removal and replacement with an, with an implant because oftentimes uh, it's just about going a couple of sizes higher in apical diameter and irrigating better than the first time. Terrific. All right. Alex, well, thanks so much for joining us. My pleasure. And I'll, we'll do some more videos together soon. We'll okay. do it. Terrific. Take care. But we will do it now. I'm Ali Alex Fleury. And let's save some tea. Yeah.